boring. Looking good, about five, ten more minutes. Hello goat lovers, Crystal here with Blue Cactus Dairy Goats and today we are in the kitchen and I'm going to show you guys how to make a delicious custard ice cream. Now I had intended on getting the buck shaved today but Littles, Sky's little buckling, had other plans for us so it took a big part of the morning up and when I shave the bucks I want to get them all done in one day, it's going to be a really big task. But anyway, Littles keeps getting outside of the fence. Um, so we had to lower that bottom line hoping that he will stop skimming under it. He's still doing it. But anyway, um, ice cream. Really, really simple, simple recipe, you guys. Um, so all you're going to need is just a few ingredients. It's going to be goat milk. Yes, you can use cow's milk, but it's definitely not going to be as good. But go ahead and try it if you don't have goat's milk. Um, we're going to need a cup of sugar, uh, five egg yolks. We're going to use some cornstarch and some vanilla and that is it that's literally all you're gonna need for this ice cream recipe so I today I'm gonna make a double batch that way I make sure that I have some for later in the week I can just put it into the ice cream maker and we'll be ready so uh, let's get started so this recipe I have a few different um, ice cream recipes actually um, in one of our playlists but I have a lot of people recently asking me, do you have an ice cream recipe? Do you have an ice cream recipe? And we have a lot more subscribers now, so I'm gonna go ahead and just make another one. But this one I've also tweaked a little bit, um, just trying to get a creamier ice cream. Because of course, when you're making ice cream with uh, milk and not cream, it tends to, once it's frozen, it can tend to kind of get really solid rather than the creamy. So anyway, um, the previous recipes I was using partial custard and then adding more milk to it and this one is just going to be a solid custard so I'm going to start with six cups of milk perfect now as I had mentioned I'm making a double batch I don't have to do it in two different pans, but that's what I'm going to choose to do because I'm anal about it. And I know that this recipe fits perfectly in my KitchenAid mixer. So that way, if I have it in the two pans, I know it's going to be perfectly even when I pour it back into the jars to cool off. So you can use one pan if you want a double batch, whatever. Okay, so the next ingredient is cornstarch. And we are going to put this in the cold milk. That's the second, first thing that goes into the milk. And of course, you just add a little bit of cold water to it. Stir it up really good, because it'll bump. I'm just gonna slowly stir it into the milk. Just like that. And now we're gonna put, before we even turn the heat, the burner on, we're gonna put one cup of sugar. Stir that up. And just turn it on very low. So at this point, you're just gonna sit here and stir it on low. And now I'm just gonna get going back and forth in between my pans. You just want to make sure that you're not going to scold your, your milk. You don't want the bottom to burn. It'll ruin it. Just keep stirring it and we're going to do that until it simmers. I also have a batch of farmer's cheese. I'm trying to keep an eye on, on the back here. If you guys have not made farmer's cheese or you don't know how, I am going to put a link to a video here and you guys will be able to see how to do it. It is the most it's a delicious cheese. Everybody should have farmer's cheese in the fridge. Just saying. So now is the time that it's getting warm. Um, so I'm going to make, just keep a very close eye. I'm going to continue to stir it. Do not walk away. Because of the cornstarch and the fact that it's milk, it will stick to the bottom and in the edges and it can get very lumpy, which is not something you want to happen. So almost there, guys. It's almost to a simmer. All right, so if you guys can see, it is simmering. And I just want it to simmer for about one minute, just light boils. And we're just going to stir it for one minute. 
this one is also just started. It takes about 10 minutes if you keep it on low. All right, this is the point where we need to temper our egg yolk. So the eggs are obviously what's gonna make the custard. So it's good, kind of thick right now, and it's just the milk, it's the sugar, and the cornstarch, which obviously the cornstarch gave it a little bit of thickening. Now the eggs, I've had people comment, I've got scrambled eggs, it didn't work. You have to take your time when tempering the eggs, um, which is just literally, we're gonna add some of this hot liquid very, 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 very slowly into the eggs, stirring it, uh, getting it incorporated really well at a very slow pace so that you can bring the temperature of those eggs up and then once the temperature of the eggs is up then we can slowly add it to uh, the milk mixture so let's do it I'm just gonna break the yolks up and the heat is off at this point because we don't want the bottom to scorch or anything And another tip too, guys, if you have your egg yolks at room temperature, it's going to be a lot less likely to get scrambled eggs out of it. So just real slow, get it stirred in, just bring the temperature up slowly without cooking the eggs. feel like rushing this part, that's when you're going to have a no bueno custard for sure. dog. I'm going to do about three of these. Three spoonfuls. And then I will feel the temperature of it from the side of the bowl. So far so good though. So that is good and hot. Well, hot enough. So now at this point, we're going to slowly stir it into the milk. from stirring it so much it's getting a little frothy but that will go away don't worry okay so I'm going to do the same thing with the other ice cream I have over here and then we're going to turn the heat back on so I'm going to get that done real quick Okay, so I got the eggs incorporated into the milk mixture and now I am going to cook it longer. So we're gonna, probably about five minutes it's gonna take. I'm gonna put, it, put the heat back on low and we want to boil it for two minutes to make sure that the eggs get cooked. So it has been boiling for a couple minutes. Um, that one has actually got done quicker. So I turned the heat off and now this one, you see the boils. So, I'm going to turn the heat off. This is the point that you're going to add the vanilla. So you're going to add the vanilla after you turn the heat off so it doesn't lose all of its flavor. We just want two teaspoons, which I don't know that I want two full teaspoons to be honest. One teaspoon is quite a bit. Oh, we have a one and a half. You guys put however much vanilla makes your heart happy, okay? I'm gonna do one and a half. All right, 
Okay, so we're just gonna stir that in and then I'm gonna get it into the jars. And this has to cool off, obviously, before you can put it into an ice cream maker or it would never work. So, this is something you definitely wanna do in advance so that you have enough time for it to cool off. And it's too hot to put in the freezer if you're gonna put it in a glass jar like I'm going to. So I'm gonna just set it in the fridge. All right, just gonna pour it into the jar. So again, this is the perfect amount for my little KitchenAid ice cream maker attachment. That is all we are going to do for now guys and it's that easy to make the ice cream base. So again, I'm going to put both of these in my freezer and then I will take one out and make ice cream with it. So you, we'll show you that part of it. Okay, so I have the ice cream base um, to a really cool temperature. I had it in the fridge for the majority of the time and then I did put it in the freezer and just kind of shake it up a little bit just to speed the process along. So it's really good and cold. Make sure you're not putting anything lukewarm into your ice cream maker because it's just not going to turn out very frozen for you. So, we have the KitchenAid and this is just a KitchenAid attachment that we actually use. It is, it's the ice cream maker. So it has like gel on the inside of it and you freeze it for a good like 18 to 24 hours. So it's really, really good and frozen. And then, you just put it in here. It comes with the paddle and it also comes with this additional attachment. So you just put that there, put your paddle inside, and there you go. Do not make the mistake, I'm going to lock it, uh, don't make the mistake of actually pouring in your ice cream base before you have it spinning because if you do it's going to freeze instantly and then the paddle isn't going to turn when you go to turn it on. So you're going to turn it on first and I just put it on two. I'm like it started freezing a little bit. But that is okay. Let's pour it. Makes it a little hard to pour in when you can't dip the whole jar because it's already going, but that's all right. Just get as much as you can, and that's it. So it takes about 20 to 30 minutes, just depending on how cold your ice cream base is and you know how cold your ice cream maker is. So I'm going to let it run typically about 30 minutes if you do it right. So I'm going to be back when that's ready. Looking good, about five, ten more minutes. All right, it's been about 25 minutes and the ice cream is looking as good as it's gonna get. Lovely. And you can also tell because the ice cream maker, you know, now it's kind of dripping water at this point. It's not as cold as far as it's not frozen anymore, so. That's about as far as we're going to get with it. So I don't know if you guys noticed, the amount of liquid, the, you know, the ice cream base that I put in here was a lot less than obviously once it starts freezing and making ice cream, it really doubles in size. So, so I'm going to take, what, i got to find it, there we go. Take out the paddle. Thank you.
Emily usually licks that, but she's busy right now. Okay, so at this point, obviously you can you can eat the ice cream as is. You know, it's not from an ice cream maker, you're never going to have the hardest of ice cream like when you buy at the store. If you want it to get a little bit more solid, then you're just going to put it in the freezer about 30 minutes, stir it again, put it in the freezer, 30 minutes, stir it again. Don't let it just sit there. Make sure you stir it a couple times and then you'll have that consistency that you're used to in the store. But this is absolutely delicious. Like it does not have to be hardened. Um, but because we're not quite ready to eat it just yet, we're going to get it into the bowl. So I'm going to make a mess here, obviously. We are going to try a little. Delicious. And this is caramel that I made from goat milk. It's called cajete. I don't say it very properly because I don't know Spanish very well. But anyway, um, it is the most amazing caramel sauce you will ever, ever, ever taste or make. And it's made from goat milk, sugar, and baking soda. And it's super, super easy to make. So I'm going to link that video here for you guys. So this is what we're going to put on our ice cream this evening. So check it out. So again, if you're wanting a harder ice cream, guys, you just put it in the freezer for a little bit. But nobody's going to complain. I probably have it all over my face now. But nobody's going to complain eating it straight out of the ice cream maker. So hope that helped you guys out. Hope that you guys will try this ice cream. It is delicious. It's very creamy and just a wonderful treat, especially in the summer where it's hot. Super, super hot here in the desert where we're at. Have a great day guys. Hope to see you again soon.